continuous landscape architecture studios focus on the multitude uh, socio-ecological and environmental issues in the complex urban context, especially in Singapore and Asian cities. It is a platform that synthesizes all the, this type of the knowledge, in-depth kind of understanding of the site. The spectrum of the studio project is broad and cover the 10 following topics. Land water interfaces are an area in which landscape architects are starting to venture into. These include things like mangroves, rivers, seafronts, beaches. So however we form the land, uh, water will flow accordingly. Some of our studios which have been based in marine parks, for example, uh, in rivers in Indonesia, have focused really on this interface between the land and the water itself. How this interplay will greatly affect the people who are living around these regions and how all these kind of come together and we cannot ignore water as an important factor in that. In Asia, especially urbanizing regions are rapidly growing in Indonesia, in Vietnam, Cambodia, you name it. Everywhere around Singapore, we are rapidly urbanizing. And that really makes Singapore the nexus of all this to happen. I mean, Singapore already has gone through the urbanization process, and I think we've done so relatively successfully. And really, we will be primed as the best location to kind of learn what we might call the best practices of urbanization. Because there is a chance for us to intervene before it's too late. Deforestation management is one of the precious topics in Singapore where a half of secondary forests are supposed to clear and develop within the next 10 years' time. Studios explore the design strategy uh, to manage and mitigate the potential socio-ecological impact of deforestation while we meeting housing and uh, commercial demand in the future development. The landscape as necessary studios challenge the student to consider how designers contribute to the socio-economically vulnerable community in many Asian cities, including Manila and Bangalore. So we made a close collaboration with the local NGO and community leaders groups so students learn some of the underprivileged people can still sustain resilience in their living. Uh, in the face of the environmental crisis. Neighborhood landscapes are really not these isolated patches, but they're really embedded in these larger ecosystems. The landscape connections within neighborhoods are often easily overlooked because they're surrounded by ever-increasingly dense cities. Uh, building heights are getting higher, things are getting more enclosed, humans are really getting disconnected at the ground level and it reinforces this idea that the outside is this kind of negative space. One of the projects that I had students work on in a neighborhood landscape studio was looking at the neighborhood of Wampo. They learned that it was very diverse and very multi-ethnic, multicultural, despite the fact that the demographic data was telling them it was more homogenous. One of the key approaches in a productive landscape studio is looking at design strategies for slum and informal settlements. And as a result, we've had a few studios that have gone overseas to that kind of context and uh, done a design studio there. They also enable us to go inside the community and students learn to interact with the residents and learn different community-based participatory approaches. They learn how to talk to the community and how to make sense of um, what's going on inside of a community. When we think about landscape in the urban environment, we consider how landscape elements can simultaneously function as urban infrastructure by integrating aspects of civil engineering, urban planning, and landscape architecture. In essence, we are looking at multifunctional landscape architecture, finding opportunities for adaptation and augmentation of existing landscape and urban infrastructure through landscape architecture. Landscape in high density environment is a common challenge in Asian context, especially in planning city as well as designing spaces. 
we looked into the site northeast of Singapore, Pongo district. So it was more like a tabla lasa, like we have a, just a open green spaces, how we actually start thinking about development. It's about creating high density living environment, but at the same time thinking about what needs to be preserved, what needs to be changed, needs to be still there to create some sort of identity for the next design that you propose. So that what we design, what we propose, uh, becomes more powerful and impactful. Rewilding Singapore was a series of studios exercise that talks about um, thinking about bringing back the secondary primary forest, its multi-tier structures, associated biodiversity, how to bring that spaces within our close proximity to our living environment. It really ties into the idea about the city and the nature vision, right, the Singapore government has. So it's more about creating an environment that's friendlier to biodiversity, let's say, and then human beings are more like visiting there as a guest. Landscape architects need to be at the forefront. At least they need to be at the table when talking about planning of new cities or even planning of existing cities. Um, the reason why this is so important is that in order for us to really truly build ecological cities, we need to first understand the landscape that is there originally. What it constitutes of, where the forests are, where the rivers are, instead of blindly kind of covering it, that's where I think landscape architects can provide a real change in the way we think about planning in the cities of tomorrow.